So when you see something say solve, and then there's an equation, right? What you need to start picturing, and this is why we labored doing those graphs last week for so long, right? Uh, and this week. You need to labor see this. This is a graph, sine x. You need to visualize this in your head. And this guy is a graph as well, right? And see how I graphed 6 on there? Where is half? Where is half on this graph? Okay. Well, you know, don't you? We said right at the beginning when we first drew <coughs> sine x, okay, that there's a top and a bottom, and sine x always has to stay in there. Okay? It's always stuck between there. What is that? What's that range? What's the lowest value you can go minus to? Minus one. Minus one. What's the highest range you can go to? One. So therefore, I know where half is, right? Half should be halfway between zero and one. Okay. <laughs> now, okay, yeah, no, it makes sense? Great. Now, on your fresh new sine curve, I want you to take your ruler, and I want you to draw, just like I drew six up here, y equals six. I want us to draw y equals a half. It's going to go through this point. Okay. So this is the enormous idea, right? When you solve this, it's not just playing around with numbers on a calculator, right? It's saying, there's a graph here, there's a graph, and this is another graph. Tell me where they collide, tell me where they are equal, where they intersect, their points of intersection. I've drawn them, right? You can see the points of intersection, okay? Now, if you draw your graph reasonably accurately, Remember we expected x equals 30 would be an answer and your calculator told you x equals 30 should be an answer. Remember this um, sine graph is periodic, right? It repeats. So at this point, I've come back to the beginning. How far? What, what's the size of my angle at this point? 360. 360, very good. So if that's 360, then halfway, this point here should be 180. 180. Now you have a look at your graph and see how well you've done it, right? This apparently, that value over there, should be... 30 degrees. Does it roughly look about a sixth the way? Right? That's, that's how close it is, right? 30 degrees is a sixth of 180 degrees, right? Mine's, yeah, not bad, okay? If yours is a bit off, no big deal. It will get better with practice, okay? But immediately, once you have your graph there, you see, just like with the quadratic, right? There is not just this one solution. There's this guy hiding right here, okay? So I'm gonna draw a dotted line down. And I'm trying to find, what is this value? This guy here, okay? Now maybe the size of it jumps out at you, okay? Which is great, but maybe it doesn't. Let me walk you through how I'm gonna find the size of this angle, okay? Remember, this graph, it has all of these symmetrical properties about it, right? In fact, if I cover up this part over here, you can see that this part, if I drew a line down the middle, is just a mirror image of itself, right? So therefore, if I went 30 degrees this way, to get my first answer, right? it makes sense to think I should go 30 degrees this way to get my second answer, right? And you told me that that's 180 degrees and I've got to go back 30. 180 degrees, you go back 30 and you land on 150, right? So now you go to your calculator to test this out. You say, well, okay, this is suggesting to me that 30 is not the only answer. 150 is also an answer sine 150 and sure enough it tells you it's a half it better tell you otherwise you can fire your calculator okay so therefore 30 degrees not the only answer right not the only answer we should put up here as well or 150 degrees now maybe at this point you're thinking calculators right how unreliable okay it's not fair there's another answer why didn't it just tell us that answer it, it can work it out calculators are smart I'll show you why it doesn't tell you the other answer it's very lazy it only tells you the first remember we said this graph it actually keeps going we've only drawn a portion of it right so over here on the right hand side I could draw it some more 
like this. Now, once I've drawn it further, you see, hold on a second, there's not two solutions. There's four solutions, at least the, on the board that I've drawn. And then if you keep on thinking, like, there's not four solutions. There's going to be six, and then eight, and then ten. In fact, there's an infinite number of solutions here. That's why your calculator kind of panics and says, ah, uh, ah, uh, I'll just give you the first one, okay? And then you can work out the rest. There is a predictability to it. We worked out this second angle from this one. I could work out the third one as well. Remember, it's repeating every 360 degrees. So if that's 30 and I go forward 360 degrees, where would you expect to end up? 390. 390? 390? Sign 390. Sure enough. Right. And I could keep going if I wanted to. Okay. So for this reason, that whenever you get something like this, there is not just one solution, there's not even just two, there's an infinite number, okay? When you get a question like this, um, you will see provided to you in the question, they will say, um, tell me just if x is acute. What does acute mean when an angle is acute? What, what range are we in? From, yeah, from not to 90, not to 90, okay? In which case, if they just want the acute angle, there it is, okay? They might say, give me acute, or obtuse, in which case you'd say, well, this is acute, and this one's obtuse, so I include both. Okay? They might say something like, can you give me the answers from 0 to 360? That's, that's this range, right? Oh, sorry, this range. Okay? Um, how many answers will you find in here? You generally will find a pair, just like this, just like our quadratic. Okay? So this idea of solving tree equations by thinking of a graph, and that's how you end up with more than one solution, okay? This is one technique. I would argue it's the main technique for how you solve these questions that involve, that give you something like this. Let's just quickly look at 1A together, okay? It starts off like this, a very similar way to the one I just workshopped with you, okay? It says sine theta equals 0 0.84, okay? Uh, and four. Now, remember, we let these exact values, right? A half, root three on two, one on root two, etc. Is 0 0.84 one of our exact values? Yeah. Uh, now, there's an easy way to test, okay? Remember how at this point, right, we said, oh, I'll use my calculator, I'll do sine inverse of whatever number they're interested in, right? So for instance, if I did sine inverse of this, it'd hand me back, sorry, cos inverse, it's a convincing it's the same. Cos inverse of this, it'd hand me back a nice neat 45 degrees. If I did um, sine inverse of this, right, and punch that in, it would hand me a nice neat 60 degrees. So I'm going to punch in sine inverse, sine inverse of 0 0.84, and I'm going to see what it hands me, right? Now when you go ahead and do that, shift, sine, you find it's not very pleasant, is it, right? It just gives you back some rubbish, okay? But that's fine, we can still work with it, we're just gonna have to approximate, which in fact the question asks us to do. Look at the top, it says, um, correct to the nearest degree. It's kind of your clue, you're gonna get some extra stuff that you're gonna have to approximate away, okay? Nearest degree, so that looks to me like 57. Okay, you happy with that? All right, now therefore though, 0.84, for sine, we know we're expecting more than one answer, right? It's not just the first one that the calculator tells you, you're gonna find another one. How did I find the other one? I went 30 degrees, and then I went 180, and I took away whatever I got from the calculator. Right? I took away 30. So therefore, my next answer I should expect will be 180, 180 degrees, take away that angle, right? So that's going to be, 123, right? Okay, now, you've still got that in, I hope you still got it in your display. If you haven't, just get it back by saying sine inverse, okay? I can quickly calculate this, 180, and I'm just gonna do 180, take away the answer. 180, take away answer. There's my, it's got, it hasn't been approximated on my calculator, so it's 122 point blah, 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 okay? If that answer is correct, I should be able to do sine of that angle, and it should give me 0.84, right? If it's the right answer. So I'm going to go sine answer, and sure enough, it hands me back 0 0.84, okay? So that's how I quickly test these are my two solutions, right? 
What I'd like you to do is, in this exercise, till next week, I'd like you to do all the ones that have sign in them, okay? See all the ones which have sign? Cos and tan work a little bit differently, and I will show you that from the graph, okay? But we're gonna have to wait till next week.